All right, let's talk about section 9.1. 9.1, we're talking about trigonometric functions in right triangles. It's going to piggyback on what we've been talking about, which is sine, cosine, and tangent. We're going to add some other ratios in there as well, um, and we'll apply them in a, in a little bit different ways um, than what we have been. So um, we've already kind of talked about labeling triangles in reference to an angle. If this is theta, then this would be the hypotenuse. We abbreviate that HYP. This would be the opposite side, and this would be the adjacent side. Okay, and we looked at three different combinations of, um, oh, back up a second. Theta is typically the variable that we use for missing angles instead of x. So theta is just the Greek, Greek letter. Um, and so whenever you see that, that symbol, it kind of looks like a zero with a slash through it. That's called theta. Okay, so we've looked at three possible, or three trig ratios already. Sine of theta, that's equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Um, cosine of theta, that's equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent of theta, which is equal to opposite over adjacent. All right Now, it turns out you can also flip these. All right? And those ratios um, also have um, names. Okay, So if you flip the sine function, you get this thing called cosecant. C-S-C -S -C is how it's abbreviated. It's written cosecant. It's not written very neatly, but anyway, cosecant is what it's called. So cosecant of theta is going to be equal to the reciprocal of this, which is hypotenuse over opposite. Secant of theta is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent. Cotangent of theta is equal to adjacent over the opposite. Okay, And... Um, Yes, it is weird that you would think cosecant would go with cosine, um, but it's the opposite of what you think it should be. Sorry, um, I'm not really sure why that is, but that those these are called the reciprocal um, functions over here. Okay, so in this first triangle here, we just want to find all six of those trig ratios of theta. So here's theta. This is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. All right, and I'm just going to find all six trig ratios. So sine of theta is going to be equal to 12 over 13. Cosine of theta is equal to 5 over 13. Tangent of theta is equal to 12 over 5. And then we just have the reciprocals of that. So I'll put a little line here. So we have cosecant. And you really just follow the table. Cosecant of theta is going to be 13 over 12. Uh, secant of theta is going to be equal to 13 over 5. Cotangent of theta is going to be equal to um, 5 over 12. And that's it on that one. All right, let's talk about special right triangles here for a second. Um, it turns out when you have a, an, a triangle that has angles 30, 60, and 90, um, there is a, a interesting relationship that shows up. So if you let the first side or that's right, if you let the small side be one unit long, the hypotenuse is twice that, all right? And this third side, by Pythagorean theorem, you could figure this out if you wanted to, but the Pythagorean theorem gives you this, square root of three for the third side, all right? So that's the ratios. Now, every 36, or sorry, that's the side lengths. For every 30, 60, 90 triangle is similar to every other 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if it is... Um, if it is a scaled up in any way, the same proportions apply. So I'm going to give you the 30, 60, 90 triangle generally as well. So if the short side is equal to just x, any value, right, then the hypotenuse is equal to 2 times x. So if the short side was 7, then the hypotenuse would be 14 because it's similar to this triangle here. And then this side here, this would be x times the square root of 3. Think of it like this you're scaling up this triangle by whatever x is. So if it's 12, then you take every number here and multiply it by 12 to get the result. Okay. Something also, uh, there's an interesting relationship between the sides in a 45-45-90 triangle as well. So if you let each leg be one unit long, they have to be the same because it's an isosceles triangle, um, then the hypotenuse is square root of 2. And like I said with 30, 60, 90, all 45, 45, 90 triangles are similar to each other. So if I let this leg be x and this one be x, then this 
uh, the hypotenuse has to be x times the square root of 2. Okay. So if you double the leg, or the, let's say that the, the leg is 7, right, then the hypotenuse would be 7 square roots of 2. Okay. All right, so, um, so uh, well, okay, I don't want to go into this here. So here, here's an interesting fact, I guess, um, that will lead into this table. So if you wanted the sine of 45, right, sine of 45, it'd be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. Now, mathematicians have a thing about square roots in the denominator, so um, they're going to rationalize this, and they're going to write this as square root of 2 over 2. Okay, um, so, all right. So you can do this for sine, cosine, tangent of 45. You can do it up here for sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 60, uh, 30 and 60. And you can do it for all the reciprocal functions as well. And so I've put all of that into this table here. I guess it is not rationalized. Um, I thought that it would be. Um, okay, so I guess that's not a big deal. So if you look at the table, you can see sine of 45 is 1 over root 2. Okay, But sometimes that will be written like this. Okay, So this table will be really helpful, and I'll show you why here in a second. So in number two, find the exact values for x and y in the given triangle. So let's start with finding x. So a label in reference to 30. This is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side. If I'm looking for x, x is going to be... Um, actually, hold on a second. I don't even need to do that. Okay, let me show you a trick here. So this is the short side, right? We know that the short side is always half of the hypotenuse. Okay, from up here, right? Short side is always half of the hypotenuse. So we can find quickly that if the hypotenuse is 8, then this value, y, has to be 4. Okay, so, and then from that, we can actually figure out that x has to be equal to um, 4 times the square root of 3. Because um, if we look at, well, actually, let me show you why that one. Because if you look up here, right, the short leg is 4, so then the long leg has to be 4 root 3. If you didn't know that, you could just do it this way. So you could be like, all right, well, I know I want the adjacent, and I, and I know the hypotenuse, so cosine of 30 is going to equal um, x over 8. And so x equals 8 cosine 30. And then you can just look at the table. Cosine of 30 is not something you want to put in your calculator because it's not a very nice value. It's root 3 over 2. Okay, so wait a second. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Okay, so this would be 8 times root 3 over 2. I just took and inserted for cosine 30 root 3 over 2 to get x. And guess what? That turns out to be 8 over 2 is 4, so it's 4 root 3. Okay. All right, um, we'll do this one real quick, and we're going to use the special right triangles to help us out here. If one leg is 5, then the other leg has to be 5, so y has to be 5. And then x, I can figure out in either using sine or cosine and tangent, um, I, special right triangles, or the Pythagorean theorem. But I'm just going to use the special right triangle because I know that if I know a leg, then the hypotenuse is the leg times root 2. So x here has to be 5 times the square root of 2. All right, and that's the fast way, fastest way to do it. Now, like I said, you could use the Pythagorean theorem. You could use um, sine, cosine, and tangent in the table, and that would, that would be fine. All right, let's talk about solving a triangle. Solving a triangle just means finding all the missing um, legs and, oh, sorry, all the missing sides and angles. So real quick, if I'll look, I'll find angle B first. I know this is 28, so this angle up here has to be 62. All right, and then to find A and C, I'm going to label in reference to 28. So this is the opposite side here. This is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. I am going to find A first, so I'm looking for the opposite, and I know the adjacent. So I'm going to write tangent, because tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it would be tan 28 is equal to um, 15, nope, I'm sorry, A over 15, times both sides by 15, and I get 15 times tan 28. Seven. 0.97, so I guess it's going to be 8. Okay, so A is equal to 8. And then, I don't think we need to take the time to show this, but then once you have A as 8, you can use... 
<coughs> excuse me, you can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what C is. Excuse me. Okay. Let's turn the back page of the notes. All right, and we've already talked about inverse trig angles. Or, sorry, inverse trig functions. So I will just do one of these real quick. Um, if you wanted to find what theta was here, then you would just do the inverse cosine of both sides. So you would get theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 0 0.28 in your calculator or in Desmos, same command, inverse cosine, 0.28, and you get 73.7 .7 degrees. So, All right, um, this triangle here, I know we're not, uh, I'm not worried about finding the missing angles because I kind of already showed you how to do that, but I want to show you if we were going to use trig to find this side, okay? So suppose that we don't know this value here. All right, so we don't know that that's 10, okay? And we know that this is um, this is 30 degrees, let's say, okay? To find this missing side, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, I know the opposite side. I'm looking for the adjacent, okay? So I can write this, tangent of 30 is equal to five over x, okay? This is a situation where, that we haven't really had to deal with, because the variables in the denominator, but you'll see that it's just the algebra will still work out fine. So I'm going to times both sides by x because I need to undo that divide by x. I need to do the opposite of it. So I get 5 is equal to x times tangent of 30. Tangent of 30, remember that's just a number, so I'm going to divide both sides by tangent of 30. Okay, and then I can figure out what x is in my calculator. So it's just going to be 5 divided by tangent of 30. And so you get 8.7 is the rounded answer there. Okay. So I just want to show you how to do one of those. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is if it asks you for the exact value, then that means leave the square roots in your answer. Okay. So if you see exact value, that means leave the square root um, in whatever your answer is. All right. And I think that pretty much wraps up section 9.1.